In an earlier video, we looked at how to expand a binomial. Using several methods, we talked briefly about the binomial theorem. In this video, I want to use the binomial theorem to find a specific term of an expansion without, without expanding the uh, binomial. So let's look at the setup here for the formula. Notice it's i equals 0 to n of ni, and then the power on the x is n minus i, the power on the y is i, n minus i and i add up to. So here's the setup. Starts at 0, the n stays fixed, so it's n all the way through, and then goes 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n over here for the last term. Also note that the powers on these terms always add up to n. n minus 1 and 1 is n, n minus 2 and 2 is n. And every term has both the first and the second term, except for the powers 1. So we have an x and a y there, x and a y there, x and a y. The last term just has a y, the first term just has an x. That's because the power on the x on the first term is 0, and the power on the y I should say the power on the uh, y on the first term is 0, and the power on the x on the last term is 0. So x to the 0 is 1, y to the 0 is 1. So if I look at, we looked at this formula before, and this is actually a formula for combinations. Integer. i is an integer, so it's really the number of combinations of n things taken i at a time. So in fact, n over i. Also, this can also be written as c. So if I look at, say, I write this. Like I said, this is the formula for combinations. It used a lot in probability. So this is n and this is i. So this would be 4 factorial divided by, you look at the formula, 4 minus 4, that would be 0 factorial. And then multiplied by i factorial, in this case i is 4. And i fact, 0 factorial rather is 1, so this is just 1. And 4 factorial, remember, means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, so it's just the product of 1 consecutive integers from 1 to whatever n is. But you don't really have to multiply this out because 4 factorial and 4 factorial cancel out. 0 factorial is 1, so this comes out to 1. If you have, say, 3, select 2, then n is 3, I would be 2, so according to the formula, this would just be 3 factorial divided by 3 minus 2 factorial, that's 1 factorial, and then 2 factorial. Of course, 1 factorial is just 1. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, that's 6. 6 divided by 2 equals to 3. 2 factorial is 2. So it's 6 divided by 2. That's 3. Okay, let's cancel this. Now, the thing I want you to notice here, we'll be using this formula to find a specific term of an expansion, or it might be the coefficient of a specific term. So first notice here that we have n0, we have n1. The exponent on the y here is 1. Whatever this exponent is, it's going to match this one this value on this uh, combination formula, 1. Notice this is 2, the exponent on the y is 2. Right here, this is 3, this is 3. And here's the formula we're going to focus on today. Formula for the, the jth term. This is j minus 1, this is j minus 1. And then these two exponents always have to add up to whatever the power is, in this case, n. Also, I want you to notice that if you're focusing on the second term, the power on the y, 
which is the second term of the binomial, is one less than the term you're looking at. Second term, this is one, and then these have to add up to n, so this the, the power on the first term is n minus one. One and one. If you're looking at the third term, the power here is one less than that, which is two. And then to get the power on the first term here, the binomial, we just subtract two from n. This and this are the same. Before we actually get to these then, you can compute these out without a calculator here, but if you use a calculator, and I think pointed this out last time, for the first one here, you want nine select six, so go nine, go to the math menu, and then get over to probability, and number three is what we want. That's the formula for combination. So nine things taken six at a time. Hit that. You get 84. Six, select three. Let's do it this way. Combination of six things taken three at a time. You get 20. This one, because both mo these these numbers are pretty close to each other. Again, it works out to 62 factorial over 1 factorial over 61 factorial. That's very easy to compute without the calculator. But if we use the calculator here, it would be 62 over to math. Number 3, 61, and you get 62. Okay, so now let's get to the problems where we deal with a specific term. This is what the video is all about, really. I wanted to review the other stuff just to get you caught up in case you didn't see some of those uh, discussions. So let's look at this one right here. Find the indicated coefficient or term. So find the indicated coefficient or term. So for this one, you want the coefficient of x to the fifth in this expansion. So it's x plus two to the ninth power. So the first term is x of the binomial and the second term of the binomial, instead of a y, it's just a plain two. So I know that every term is gonna have, every term of the expansion will have the product of the first term and the second term of the binomial, in this case, x and two, except where the power is zero. So this is the way it's going to work. I want the coefficient of x to the fifths, so I know I have to have a fifth power on the x. I put a 5 there. But if I put a fifth power on the x, because the power of the binomial is 9, then this one has to have a power of 4, because they always have to add up to whatever we start off with. The power is 9, so 5 and 4 gives to be 9. This gives me the coefficient. This is the formula for combinations, according to the binomial theorem. So the n always stays fixed, whatever it is, in this case is 9. And this second value here is always what the exponent on the second term is, so this should be a 4. And then you do the calculations. So this is going to be then x to the fifth. And then you compute this out, either manually or using the calculator. Let's go ahead and use the calculator. So this will be 9, and then math, over to probability, and then number 3. And then we want this to be a 4, so that gives me 126. So 9, select 4, this value right here in front is 126, but that has to be multiplied by 2 to the 4th power, which is 16. So I just hit multiplication here. 16. And I get 2016. So this would be 2016.
But the answer is not the term they want the coefficient. So 2016 is your answer for that one. Okay, let's look at the next one. Want the coefficient of x to the fourth in the expansion of this. Very similar problem. So in this case, the two terms are 3x and 1. So I'm going to write this. I would always go ahead and you work in these types of problems, write it this way. Write it as a product. So it's 3x. And then the 1 is the second term of the binomial. So again, I want the coefficient only, not the actual term. Coefficient of x to the fourth. Okay, so look at the term that has the x, and I want that to be come out to x to the fourth, so I obviously have to have a four power here. And the power on the one doesn't really matter because it's going to be a one, but we know it has to add up to a 12, so we put an eight here. So it's going to affect the part you put for the coefficient. So this is a 12. And this second value is always the value that you have for the power in the second term of the binomial, in this case a 1, so this will be an 8. So then all you have to do is, combine, is uh, compute this value, 12 select 8, multiply it by 3 to the 4th, which is 81, and then multiply it by 1, because 1 to the 8th, this 1. So let's do it this way. Let's, go, let's find the uh, coefficient here, this part of it anyway. So it's 112, and then go to math, number 3, and then we want second value to be 8, hit enter, and we get 495, and then that's going to be multiplied because here we, ha we have to evaluate this, so this would be 3x to the 4th, so that will give me the uh, x to the 4th part of the term, and then 3 to the 4th is 81. So then we multiply what we got by 81. And we get 40,095. This value here. And then of course you have the x to the fourth. So if they ask you for the, the term that satisfies that statement, that would be that's what uh, the answer you would give. But it's asking for the coefficient. So this is the answer you give, 40,095. Okay, and the next one, it, this one is asking you for the, th for the third term. So it wants the third term. So the terms of the binomial are x and negative 3. You always, write, you always write it with a plus. So if you rewrite this, this would be x plus negative 3. And that's to the seventh power. So instead of an x and a y, it's an x and a negative 3. So the third term in the expansion of this, based on what I said earlier, if you're looking for the third term, this power right here on the second term of the binomial should be one less than that, which will be a two. That means that this power has to be a five. Because the power of the binomial is seven, these always have to add up to the power of the binomial. And then, coefficient then will go here and again this is going to be effective because we have a value over here to compute also this times that so this will be seven and again the second value here is always the value that we have on the second term here exponent so this will be seven select two and then we just a matter of multiplying this out use the formula for combinations then so this should be 7 over the math 
probability number three. Second value would be two here. We hit enter here, get 21. And then we have to multiply that by negative three squared, which is nine. This is times nine. So the answer to this one then, the third term is 189. x to the fifth, 189 x to the fifth. Probably follow up with another video on specific terms of a binomial, a little bit more involved in this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.